Throughout their history, the Vatans have developed ways of predicting weather events, especially those that could pose a large threat to their survival and continuity as a society. This is because of the fact that the Batanes Islands are strategically located in a region where weather easily changes and strong typhoons often come to visit. Even though modern weather and communication services are widely available in the islands as of the present, each old practices dependent on natural elements regarding the prediction of weather are still instilled in the instincts of the Batan people even today. One such practice is the observation of the sky as it turns into a vivid shade of orange going into pink during the late afternoon hours which signifies the coming of a typhoon. Locally called Mailanyag in the Batang dialect and Miragatag in the Itbat dialect, this weather event is locally described as a usual sign that a fairly strong typhoon is about to come in the next few hours or the next day. It is characterized by the presence of the fast, oncoming thick cloud coverage which colors the skies a shade of orange, then pink as the sun sets and light diminishes. As ominous and mesmerizing as it looks, this meteorological event is actually grounded in science, specifically in the field of physics and meteorology. Before anything else, we must understand the concept of atmospheric optics, or why the sky looks the way it does on certain conditions. Starting off, we'll be looking into the reason why the sky is blue on a typical day. Sunlight, which is made of white light, is made up of seven different colors, which are your usual red, orange, yellow, green, blue, indigo, and violet. These colors correspond to different wavelengths, the red being the longest and the violet being the shortest. Now, you may remember that the Earth's atmosphere is mostly made up of oxygen and nitrogen particles, right? Well, these particles are smaller than the wavelength of light itself, making them reflective of the shortest wavelength of visible light, which is violet. But that doesn't make sense. Why is the sky not violet then? Simply put, our human eyes are limited. They are mostly insensitive to violet light and as such, they adjust to the blue wavelength which is more perceivable to human eyes. This is also the same reason why we can see the violet band of the rainbow that well. Now that we understand why we see the sky as blue, let's focus on the meteorological event at hand. As you can imagine, the sky's composition changes when there is an incoming typhoon. The usual nitrogen and oxygen particles are now replaced by salt molecules, crystals, and water droplets suspended in the atmosphere. How did they get there, you may ask? Well, as the typhoon travels over the ocean, warm air rises over the seawater, causing it to rapidly evaporate. This leaves behind salt particles and more water droplets suspended in the atmosphere, increasing its density. You may have drawn the conclusion before that the sky is blue on a typical day because the atmosphere is at normal levels of density and thus sunlight travels uninterrupted. But because of the aforementioned particles, its travel is now interrupted. And since blue light is susceptible to reflection because of its short wavelength, the increased amount of particles in the atmosphere causes it to be reflected more intensely and away from our eyes, and thus the reason why the sky isn't blue when this meteorological event occurs. Red light, however, has the longest wavelength out of all the colors present in the visible light spectrum. This specific characteristic allows it to penetrate the thick atmosphere and be reflected towards our line of sight. However, since the sky is filled with impurities, especially when a typhoon is about to arrive, the red light appears in different shades. When the sun is still up, the sky appears to be reddish-orange, and when the afterglow ensues after the sun sets, the sky appears to be pinkish in color. Another factor weighing in on this meteorological event is its vividness, or how the colors turn out to be so intense and often uneven. As to why this happens, the incoming storm generates forces which push away the large particles in the atmosphere which are essential in distributing light evenly. Without these large particles, the sky's colors appear brighter and more uneven. 